Hello everybody, my name is John McCall and welcome to another Division 2 video. In today's video I want to show you another specific role in the Iron Horse raid. We take a look how you play the control room position and the build for it at Captain Pfizer. Let's get started. The specialization that I use for this position is the survivalist, the reasons are the 15% outgoing healing and the 10% increased protection from elites. As your weapons you can use whatever you like, you will not do any damage when you play the control room with a build like this, that means your weapons are not important at all. More important is your gear. This build is a healer build that is focused on incoming repair to keep yourself alive. I play with 3 pieces future initiative. With 2 pieces you get 30% repair skills and with 3 pieces 15% skill haste and 30% skill duration. The attributes are the same on all 3 pieces, skill tier, repair skills and repair skill mod. On my chest piece I using an RK piece cause one piece gives me 20% incoming repairs. I got skill tier, repair skills, skill haste and the repair skill mod on it. The talent that I use is kinetic momentum. When in combat, each skill generates a stack while active or not on cooldown. Stacks increases your total skill damage by 1% and total skill repair by 2%, up to 15 stacks per skill. Lost when on cooldown. With this talent, I get at max 60% skill repair out of it, which is pretty insane. The holster is another future initiative piece with the same attributes as the mask. The backpack is an Alp Summit, one piece Alp Summit gives me 20% skill repair. I got skill tier, repair skills, skill haste and a skill haste mod on it. There is no useful backpack talent for this build so don't focus on that. I use the same backpack as on my normal healer, that's the reason why it has opportunistic on it. On the gloves I use the exotic gloves BTSU data gloves, they are with skill tier, skill haste and repair skills. The talent is transference overclock, grants 15% hive skill haste per skill tier. Detonating a hive refreshes your skill cooldowns and grants overcharge for 15 seconds. If it's skill tier 6, this effect also applies to all allies. Allies receiving this effect are unable to benefit from it again for 120 seconds. And the knee pads are the last future initiative piece, again with the same roles as the mask and the holster. The skills that I use are the fixed drone, that's where my main heal is come from and my second skill is the hive, I use the hive during my drone is on cooldown or if I need to overcharge. Let's jump into the raid now and take a look how the build and method looks in action. To start the boss fight you have to open up gate A for the furnace tank so he can step inside and How's call out the first code for you. Lieutenant Gray failed me. He will call I out either you. a letter or a screen number. I will show you a picture where you can see which letter belongs to which screen. On this picture you see that F is screen 1, P is screen 2, C is screen 3, R is screen 4, M screen 5 and numbers is screen 6. On this picture you see how the codes look like. There could be two cups also known as double, a broken cup, a full cup which is the white cup, an empty cup which is the black cup or a moving cup also known as arrow. These cups could be either on a conveyor belt or on a hook. So in this case screen 1 is double belt, 
Screen 2 is broken hook. Screen 3 is black or empty on a hook. Screen 4 is broken on a belt. Screen 5 is empty or black on a belt. And screen 6 is double hook. Also important to know is that the doubles are always empty. Once one of your teammates was shooting the right box, Captain Pfizer will appear. Now you have to wait till the next code is up. Next code is up, for example the furnace tank is calling out screen 5. So it's broken on a belt. If Captain Pfizer is doing his wipe mechanic, you have to open up gate A to let the tank out of the furnace. As soon as the glass of the control room is broken, take out your fixed drone to keep yourself alive. If you hear the alarm, you have to open the gate where the rockets are in. What we normally do is that we destroy the rockets on Charlie, so we have both rockets on Alpha. Keep gate A open till the furnace tank was shooting both rockets at the train. If your teammates don't miss any of the codes, you have to do a total of 5 codes till the crucible is at 100%. Once the crucible is at 100, you have to start moving it forward. You have to do that on the console in the middle of the control room. There are three weak points that blocking the crucible from moving forward. What you have to do is move the crucible forward, open up gate A for one of the DPS people in your team that he is able to destroy the weak point. During this whole sequence, keep attention at your life bar. If your fixed drone is on cooldown or if your life bar is critical, take out your hive. After the first weak point is broken, you have to run back to the console in the middle of the control room and move the crucible forward. And as I already said, there are three weak points, so you have to do this three times. After the third weak point is broken, you have to move the crucible twice to pour out the lava over the train. Yeah, ready to fight. Now we have to cool down the lava with the water gun in the furnace. If the tank is not in yet, let him in through gate A and call out for water. Run in the back of the control room to the pressure valve and hit it if you have enough water pressure. As soon all your teammates are in gate B, open it up and keep it open till Captain Pfizer is dead. Once he's dead, close B to let your teammates back out. That was how you play the control room position at Captain Pfizer in the Iron Horse raid and a build that you can use for it. I hope you enjoyed the video. If you have other build ideas for the control room or if you have questions about this build or method, use the comment section down below. If you liked the video, please click that like button and if you want to support me, click the subscribe button as well. And most important, hit the notification bell to stay tuned and don't miss any new video or livestream. Till the next time.